Welcome everyone to Mamadose Medical Media, a free online YouTube channel, weekly posting new medical videos. Join our Facebook and Telegram groups for more interaction and latest news. You could also support the channel on Patreon, where we upload multiple choice questions and other premium content. Thanks in advance. Central Inhibition of Pain Hi again to another video in the Physiology of Pain. This video is about Central Inhibition of Pain. Before we go to what central inhibition of pain is, let's quickly revise the pathway of pain fibers. In response to tissue injury, pain signals are initiated, having their cell bodies on the dorsal root ganglia. On the Rax lamina 2-3, the substantia gelatinosa, the first order neuron releases the neurotransmitter substance P to stimulate the transmission of pain signals on the second order neuron. The signal reaches the brain and other areas and pain sensation is perceived this way. Central inhibition of pain is a theory that pain signals are inhibited or completely blocked by ascending and descending tracts. In the year 1965, Dr. Ronald Meltzak and Walt Patrick, may they rest in peace, came to us with a new theory. After experiments, observations, and beliefs that pain is inhibited by ascending and descending tracts. Observations like rubbing or stroking around injured area relieves the pain for a while. Pain perception hugely varies between individuals because of difference in age, personality, and gender. The use of mustard seed and grinding them, adding water and vinegar as we use it as a spice in food, the surprising thing is that they made mustard plaster because they saw its uses on relieving the pain by irritating the skin around the injured site. It's also used to treat chest congestion, so we might also try this for COVID-19 cases. Other observation from the Chinese traditional medicine, the yin and yang, the energy or they call it the qi. They say that the qi flows through pathways and there are 350 acupuncture points accessible in the human body. When fine needles are inserted with combinations on depth and size, it will bring the qi balance or flow back to normal. Chinese fine needles and acupuncture have a major health benefits other than relieving pain and feeling of well-being. It was mentioned by the WHO that it has a major positive health effect. You could check for it. Other procedure for relieving pain is the cupping therapy or the Islamic hijama, where small incisions made on the skin and sucking cold or heated cups are applied. It's still under research about the benefits and side effects of the cupping therapy or the hijama. So Ronald Meltzik and Walt Patrick proposed the gate control theory. They said that the substantia gelatinosa is the gate of pain and to feel pain, signals must pass through substantia gelatinosa, and we say the gate is open. The dorsal column tract, with its thick, rapidly propagating fibers, when stimulated, it inhibits and sometimes block the pain signals transmission. It has been found that there are interneurons connecting the dorsal column tract fibers with the pain fibers. When the dorsal column tract is stimulated, it will stimulate the interneurons which will release GABA as inhibitory neurotransmitter, causing presynaptic inhibition, which means blocking the release of substance P from the pain afferents, resulting in stopping the transmission of pain signals. GABA analogues like pregabalin and Lyrica are used for cases of chronic pain to block pain signals from reaching to the higher centers promoting a feeling of well-being. So guys, that's it uh, for the video about the central inhibition of pain and the gate control theory. In our next video, we will look at the descending tracts of pain and how extreme emotional reaction to certain social circumstances could completely block the feeling of pain for some time. Thanks for watching and we meet in our next video.